Pagans looking for Roman ruins out there. It's a wonderful place. Um, I, we're here tonight to talk about giving, and I, I want to encourage you all to be as generous as possible, obviously. Um, and I thought I'd just get you in the mood by telling you a little bit about my giving journey, which is a slightly strange one. So I'm a uh, TV presenter here in the UK, for those of you who don't know. Uh, and I used to do a lot of charity work, but that was very much a charity work. And uh, it was, I was giving my time. I wasn't giving my money, because I didn't have a lot of money. I was giving my time, uh, which is not to be sniffed at. Uh, and I, for example, spent today giving some time. I was at a, quite a challenging uh, school down on the south coast of England, uh, taking a history class trying to help some young people with their GCSEs. And it was fantastically rewarding. I, I urge you to think both into your giving in terms of your money, of course, but also uh, time. Don't underestimate how many opportunities there are out there now for you guys to get involved, things like mentoring, things that you can do whilst you know, holding down jobs, even city jobs. I know it sounds, <laughs> you know, sounds naive. However, my giving journey took a bit of a, a turn when I met my wife. I met a nice guy, I sat next to a nice girl at a wedding, and I went out on a date with her, and she revealed that she was the daughter of the richest British person in the world, the Duke of Westminster, who owns lots of London and lots of other places. Uh, she gave, she is a philanthropist, She's a very young philanthropist. She's only 31 years old now, and she's been giving away large amounts of her money since her late teens. Um, we give together now, in fact, or rather, you know, I help to decide where the money goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a sort of quite a low budget uh, <laughs> men in the gates, I suppose. But um, in fact, it's actually worse than that because now I sort of I feel really rich, so I end up shoveling all my own money out. So if we get divorced, <laughs> I'm in a world of pain. <laughs> um, we have, and that journey that we've been on together is incredibly exciting and very rewarding. We have uh, traveled around the world uh, looking at various projects that, uh, that she supports and that we, we might support together. Criminal justice is her thing. She went into prisons in uh, Nepal when she was 18 to rescue children that were being brought up in confinement in prisons in breach of their human rights, uh, often born in prisons as the result occasionally of rape by prison guards on female inmates uh, who knew nothing on the outside. So. Uh, a very interesting project out there, and we've been and we spent um, some time in January in Kathmandu Central Jail, um, and and in, and in a way, it's been such an exciting, rewarding sector because it's not very fashionable, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, we're going to Hull tomorrow to work with a, a crime prevention project that has huge success working with kids, uh, and it's celebrating its 20-year anniversary called Prison Me No Way. We go out to Hull to get involved in that. Uh, she's opened a restaurant and a prison in Cardiff. Uh, well, actually, a chain of prison restaurants that you can all go and, uh, and enjoy them. They're fantastic silver service dining at reasonable price uh, in, in prisons uh, when everything, the cooking, the service, the maitre d', everything uh, uh, is provided by inmates. And the reoffending rate in Britain is around 70% after two years. If you, uh, after two years of being let out of prison, around 70% of people reoffend. At the moment, in the clink, these restaurants, the reoffending rate is down about 10%. So uh, that's an example of uh, investing in people uh, out, of, out, of, you know, out of belief in, in the perfectibility of people, in the belief that these people can achieve something, and it also has an enormous f real financial and, and social effect uh, in the world as well. We also spent, just before Christmas, we gave ourselves a little treat, we went to Cape Town, and we spent the weekend in a supermax facility outside Cape Town, and we hung out with lots of multiple murderers, in particular, who have started one of the most remarkable prison projects I've ever come across called Circle of Hope, uh, and who have adopted effectively these AIDS orphans, and they come into prison, and they are mentoring these AIDS orphans uh, in the prison, uh, and it sounds quite unethical and strange, it probably could only happen this afternoon, but it is the mo one of the most inspiring and brilliant projects ever, and have been around supporters of that. Um, so on the, on, the, on the back of that, just to, just to be brief, uh, here are some of my thoughts on giving, given that I'm quite new to it, uh, and here are some of my thoughts on giving. They're not very scientific, uh, and uh, they're pr I'm probably going to say the wrong thing, but, but just bear with me. Um, the main thing about giving is it is absolutely, unbelievably addictive and fun. Uh, and it's astonishing to me when I meet very wealthy people, and through my wife I've met some very, very wealthy people, it's astonishing to me how few of them are serious philanthropists, because basically it's fantastically awesome and it gives you a massive buzz. I know sometimes you're not supposed to say that, but it is. It's extremely exciting for the individual that's giving. Um, it is so exciting spending time with a group of kids who you've facilitated something extraordinary happening or sitting around with a, 
a group of uh, murderers in South Africa who are explaining the challenges they face on release uh, and the challenges and, and, the, and the excitement of, of working with these young children and, and that, their role in their rehabilitative journey and realizing that you have facilitated that. Without you, that project would not be happening. And that's extraordinarily exciting and gratifying. It is better than, uh, you know, but you see types like a table at Abacus and throwing money around and drinking big magnums of uh, champagne. That's better, I promise, than doing that. Um, my wife also feels very strongly, I mean, this is the second point, which is obviously um, sort of more important, I suppose, which is that in order to enjoy the benefits of, of, of wealth, which she has, in, has acquired through the most outrageously ridiculous stroke of luck, birth, uh, many of you, of course, uh, it she has, and many of you, of course, working extremely hard and, and no doubt feel that you deserve that wealth, and of course you do, but um, she feels that in order to live, come to terms with it and live with it day to day, the enormous inequality, the enormous wealth that she's been given is that she um, has to give it away. Um, and, and it enables her, on a, on a purely personal level, to, go to, to look people in the eye on the streets, to look people who are less fortunate than yourself in the eye and know that you're doing something uh, you're absolutely doing your bit, and, I, and I, I think that's absolutely true as well. She is trying to build uh, a fairer and more compassionate society, and she's able to do so. She's been given the great privilege, been able to do so by directing money where she thinks it can best, it can, uh, it can serve best. Um, we enjoy our lives better. We live extremely privileged lives, and we enjoy them better because we know that on Monday morning we're going to Brixton Prison and spend the whole day there working on various projects. Um, another, another point, and, and you're going to find this out tonight, is you meet the most extraordinary people. You're never bored a minute in your life. You'll be surrounded, once you enter the world of philanthropy, of giving, of charity, uh, in that sector, you will be surrounded by inspirational, brilliant, extraordinary, bizarre people. <laughs> and you will never, ever be bored. And these people are changing, you're going to meet some of these people tonight. These people are changing the world, one cell, one child, one offender, one tree in a rainforest jungle, at, the, at a time. So tonight I urge you to give money and I also urge you to see this at the start, especially some of the younger, lots of young faces out there, I urge you to see this as a start of a, of a journey that you might take. Uh, and, and seeing your money um, as something that can give you a great time and get you great benefit, of course, in life, but actually having seen how my wife has, has brought about change, you realize that money is an extraordinary gift, an extraordinary potential uh, source of power to change this city, this country, and in fact, the world. Uh, and I invite you to take a big step on that journey tonight. Thank you very much. Woo!